So we've got an art class here and a dance class. So, or club, sorry. <laughs> we have 17 students in the class looking to be in art or dance. Some of them are in both, some of them are in none. So if we look at the probability of A happening, again, the art club, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kids that are only in art, but then there's Mary here that's actually in both. So our probability that someone is in art is that there's eight students out of the 17 in art. So we can include Mary, even though she's not just in art. So the probability of B that they're in just the dance class, or sorry, that they're in dance class would be these six people, one, two, three, four, five, six. But then we also can include Mary because she, even though she's in art, she's also in dance. Part C says probability of A and B. So that's what, what the probability that someone is in art and dance. And as you can see, Mary is the only one in both. So it's just a one out of 17. Part D is probably the hardest one here because we have to actually deal with the fact that we have to remember a formula here. So it's the probability of A given that B. What's the probability that someone's in art given that they are also in dance? So um, you would do the intersection, one over 17, divided by the probability that they are in dance, um, seven out of 17. And so uh, when you keep change flip those, one out of 17 times 17 over seven, you're left with a one out of seven shot of um, selecting someone in art, given that they had to be in dance, which if you think about it, um, there's seven kids in dance. So once you've eliminated all these other people, the odds of selecting Mary um, is a one out of seven chance. Um, this next one here is just supposed to demonstrate the um, uh, concept because you have the probability of B up here of seven over 17 and the probability of um, a given that b the one over seven and it's just asking you to multiply those together and get one over 17 which will lead you to actually the reason why you did that was to look at part f there it says which probability is equal to um basically that's just asking about part e what probability is equal to part a and if you notice you got the same fraction as part C there, okay? Which is again, just demonstrating the formula. If you take the formula in part D, you've got the probability of A given B equaling the probability of A and B all over the probability of B. And if you get the, if you manipulate the formula so that it looks like this, you just would have to multiply by the probability of B on both sides which shows you that you would get the formula that the probability of the intersection of A and B is equal to this original part right here. That the two things circled in green are the exact same thing. Um, what's most important is for you to understand part A, B, C, and D. The E and the F is more of like a proof concept right there.